Hi, my name is Mahmoud Qalyubi. Um, I'm currently on the uh, Executive Global Masters in Management program and I'm here to speak to you today about business strategy. I hope to be able to answer the question of why two competitors um, in the same industry with the same resources are not able to achieve the same successes. It only makes sense to study business strategy um, if business strategy does make a difference for companies. So if you take an example of a perfect market where you have a large number of sellers and buyers, where you have perfect information, consumers and producers, they all are aware of the uh, product prices, and you have a homogeneous um, a product where the quality uh, characteristics of that product is known to all, uh, then possibly the uh, business strategy will not make uh, much of a difference. Whereas in a, a setting where you have uh, a market with uh, economic conditions, um, I mean like an economy that is expanding, um, shrinking due to uh, microeconomics or microeconomics factors, then business strategy will make a major sense. So what is strategy? Um, Alfred Chandler explains in his uh, book, uh, Strategy and Structure, that strategy is the determination of long-term objectives and goals of the enterprise, and the adoption of course of action, and the allocation of resources necessary to carry on these goals. Chandler emphasized that the uh, primary goal of executives, senior executives of, of firms, is to guarantee and ensure long-term survival and growth of the firm. So the next question that comes to mind is how do senior managers formulate their own strategies? Chandler spoke about this and he mentioned um, the planning uh, view of strategy formulation where senior managers would actually set out their objectives. They would look at ways um, of actually going about uh, these ob objectives and actually reaching to their um, goals uh, and then choosing one specific uh, path and then pursue it by uh, allocating resources into that path and accordingly uh, you know walking away with the impl implementation and the end result of um, you know an overall strategy. On the other hand, Henry, Henry Mintzberg, he spoke about the emergent um, uh, view of strategy formulation, uh, which is in reality the reversed uh, process of, of the planning view. Um, so what happens is senior managers would look at um, you know, implementing a new idea, testing a new, a new idea in the market, and then see if it works or, or, or if it doesn't work. And now if it works, they will go and figure out how, why it was successful and they will go and allocate resources into actually growing um, you know, that idea and then accordingly you know, becoming um, a strategy or part of the strategy of, um, of the firm. It's very crucial that um, senior managers uh, relay the strategies that they're trying to formulate to the environment that they're actually competing in. So industries come to be a major player um, in dictating what strategy you choose. Michael Porter, a Harvard economist and professor suggests that the key factor to actually um, formulate a competitive strategy is to find um, a position in the industry where a firm is able to defend itself. He suggests that in order to be able to uh, find that competitive positioning, uh, there are two steps to the uh, process. The first one is to find an attractive industry. You need to go back and actually look at the history and the profitability of that industry and then look at the uh, profitability of the best company in that industry. Not only that, but also you need to look at the five forces that uh, Michael Porter talked about. Um, and these five forces are actually uh, covering the external aspects of an industry. As a senior manager, you um, are compelled to look at what uh, your competition is doing and how severe is the competition in the market or in the industry. Um, you're you're um, you know, compelled to look at um, the possibility of new entrants into the market, um, as well as the power that your suppliers um, have and the power that your buyers have. Um, and finally, the threats of uh, new substitutes in the market. An attractive industry would be an industry that has um, low competition, um, has high barriers of entry, and uh, is, not, is not too late into the product cycle. So the second step would be by choosing um, a position in the market after the due diligence had been done. Porter's methodology gives senior managers a great way of figuring out um, how to defend the position. But not necessarily it's answering the question of why two companies and two competitors within the same industry having the same resources are able to achieve different results. So for example, we can take the internet industry. Um, if you look at Amazon versus uh, Barnes & Nobles, um, Amazon uh, being uh, you know, in, a, in a rapid industry that changes on a daily basis, uh, whereas uh, Barnes & Noble is having that business model of actually uh, being more of a traditional bookstore. Porter's 
methodology can tell us how um, Barnes and Nobles can slow Amazon, but it can't tell us how Amazon can grow fast. So to explain why one company can do things that other companies can do, but they not necessarily are doing, um, senior managers have to answer two questions. The first question is, what are the necessary capabilities for that company to be able to um, achieve what it wants to achieve? And number two, how can that firm mobilize such resources to achieve its goals? Senior managers have to shift their focus now to internal analysis of the firm. So if we look at Sony, for instance, um, versus Apple, Apple was able to foresee an opportunity and construct a phone early on and take the opportunity to create a whole supply chain out of it and be a, a first mover. Whereas Sony um, had realized that this opportunity is out there, but not necessarily made um, you know, the efforts to pursue it because they were afraid that it will affect the sales of other products. So senior managers are really encouraged to look at the inside and, out, and the outside of their firms to com for combining their strategies. Senior managers are really encouraged to identify uh, competitive advantages in their firm and bring those competitive advantages to life and pick them as part of their existence in the market. The resource-based view sees these sources to be the unique factors of production. We're talking about people, land, equipment, building, etc. etc. These resources are valuable, scarce, and hard to imitate. And senior managers are required to develop them and to keep on the process of renewing them. Furthermore, the concept of capabilities, which is a subset of the firm's resources, should be made dynamic. Dynamic capabilities can be defined as the firm's ability to integrate, build, and reconfigure internal and external core competencies to manage the rapidly ever-changing business environment. Examples of such capabilities are innovation, strategic alliances and acquisitions, and strategic decision making. The final concept that I want to introduce is something that Hamel and Prahlad um, had talked about, which is the core competencies. So core competencies offer um, customer benefits and or cost benefits and help in developing a competitive advantage for that firm. Core competencies are not values. They're not financial assets, nor physical assets, nor products. Rather, they are described to be an accumulation of skills and learning experience vested into people. Let's take Disney for example. They're able to take the content of old work and the learnings and the experience from that work and put it into new activities. Activities such as books, music, TV shows, theme parks, and even cruise liners. In essence, Disney is able to take things that, they, that have worked for them before and actually put them into new ways, creating diversification for the firm. The success of a firm depends on how efficient its strategy is. Not only has the firm to understand its own um, external positioning in the industry it operates in, but it has also to understand its own internal abilities and resources. By doing so, the firm will be able to structure itself in a way that it's able to deliver on its promises and value propositions. So my key takeaways for you today is to understand the definition of a strategy and the importance of formulating a strategy and to understand the industry positioning and to understand the internal capabilities of a firm. I hope you find that to be useful. Many thanks for watching.